Periodic trends. So to understand the periodic trends we're going to be looking at today, we need to understand a concept called effective nuclear charge. And this is the attraction electron fields towards the nucleus. So remember, the nucleus is where the protons are. Protons have a positive charge. Electrons have a negative charge. Negatives and positives attract. And so the electrons are attracted to the nucleus. But it's not a even attractive force that each electron is going to feel. It's going to depend on where that electron is around the nucleus, so those shells that it's at, and how many protons there are within the nucleus as well. So different atoms will have different electron arrangements, and those electrons will be attracted differently towards the nucleus. This leads to different properties that these atoms will have. So as we move down, so here's a, a, a sketch of um, some Bohr Rutherford diagrams from the periodic table. And it's, it's not outlining everything that's in the nucleus, but we know that in the nucleus there is the proton. And we know that um, each proton that we have is represented by the atomic number. And so hydrogen with, with the atomic number of one. So hydrogen here with an atomic number of one has one proton, helium has two protons, lithium has three protons, and so on down the line left to right as we go across a period, and then so on and so forth. Um, so these electrons are going to be attracted by the protons in the nucleus. As we move down a group, though, so we start, let's say, here at hydrogen, and as we move down the group, group number one, you'll notice that each time we move down, we have an extra electron shell. So period one, these guys across the top here, have one shell. Period two has two electron shells. Period three has three electron shells. This is why the periodic table is arranged in the way it is. So as you move from one shell to two shells to three shells, um, the pull that the electrons are feeling in that outer shell is going to be less and less and less as you move down a group. The reason being is that the inner shells um, are, are sort of blocking that attractive force of the nucleus. And so the more inner shells there are, the less attractive force those outer electrons, because remember, it's, it's the outer electrons that determine the chemistry of the atom. Um, so the, the further away they are from the nucleus, the more inner shells there are blocking that attractive force of the nucleus, the less effective nuclear charge those outer electrons have. So hydrogen's electron is going to be fairly well attracted to the nucleus, not as much as lithium's outer electron, and sodium's outer electron is going to feel even less attraction. The further electron is, the less attraction it feels. And again, they don't actually have feelings. Um, we're just using that word to describe the attractive force of that electron to the nucleus. So the less attractive force it has um, from the nucleus. And therefore, we can, we can use that word effective nuclear charge. There's a smaller effective nuclear charge. So as you move down the group, you get a smaller and smaller effective nuclear charge. As you move across a period, uh, it's a little bit more complicated. So as you move across to the right, so when you go from, let's, let's use the second period here. Um, so as you go from lithium to beryllium to boron to carbon, you're dealing with the same shells. So we're not dealing with any extra internal shells or anything like that. Um, so you're adding an electron each time you move to the right, but you're also adding a proton to the nucleus. So beryllium has one more proton than lithium, Boron has one more proton than carb uh, than beryllium. Carbon has one more proton than boron, and so on and so on. Each time you move to the right, you add in more protons. And the shell stays the same. Notice that everyone in period two only has two shells. We're just adding electrons into that second shell as we move across period two. So the electrons within a shell, they're only being shielded by the inner electrons. So if you look at lithium here lithium has see that in yellow the inner shell um there's only one inner shell and and you go to beryllium there's just one inner shell it's the same inner shell all the way across so that means the shielding effect of this inner electrons is the same all the way across there's no increase in the shielding as you move to the right but again remember there is an increase in protons 
as you move to the right. So as you move to the right, you don't get any more shielding, but you do get more protons. Um, and therefore, as you move to the right, each electron feels more attraction um, because of that additional proton. You're not adding any other shells, and the, sh uh, the electrons within its own shell don't really ha cause any shielding. So essentially, each electron, as you move to the right, experiences more effective nuclear charge. There's greater attraction towards the nucleus as you move towards the right. So another way of saying that is if you're going to the left, there would be less. So remember each of these, depending on which direction you go, it'll have the opposite effect. So in summary, what we have so far is if you move up a period, as we saw in the last slide, you're gonna have less shielding and therefore you have greater effective nuclear charge. As you move right across the periodic table, you're going to have, again, the same amount of shielding, but more protons, and therefore you're gonna have greater effective nuclear charge. So moving up or moving to the right causes the electrons to be, the outer electrons, to be more attracted to the nucleus relative to something uh, towards the left or something below it. So the first trend that we wanna look at this effective nuclear charge being applied to. So, so that's the cause. And then the effect can be seen in essentially four different trends that we're gonna be looking at in this course. We're gonna focus on two of them today. We'll mention a third one, and then we'll, we'll deal with the fourth one later. The first one we wanna talk about is atomic radii. Nice, easy one to understand. Um, you know what radius means, you can imagine. If we're, we're imagining these, these electrons as spheres, then its radius would be the distance from the middle of the atom to where those electrons are, um, the boundary of, of where the electrons are. So I think the outer, outer electrons, um, we're gonna have a radius from the innermost point to the outermost point, and that is a radius. So really a good, it's the size of the atom. So we can see, we make a graph of the atomic radius versus the atomic number. And what it is going to show to us is it's visualizing the pattern of the numbers. Um, but here's the first two. So this is period one, this is period two, this is period three, and then we have a little bit of period four as well. So again, this is hydrogen and helium in period one, lithium all the way down to neon in period two and so forth. And so what we see is that within the periods, the trend for atomic radius is that as you move across the period, the atoms get smaller. Don't confuse the size of the atom for the mass of the atom. We know it as you move across a period from say lithium to neon, we know the atoms becoming more massive. You're adding protons and electrons, neutrons, it's gonna be more massive. But here we are not talking mass, we are talking size of the atom, the space in which it takes up. Lithium is a larger atom. And then as you move across, we get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller down to uh, down to, uh, get this right here, neon. Um, and so why is this? Why would the size of the atom, even though it's becoming more massive as you move across the period, why would the size be decreasing? And if you understood what we were saying about effective nuclear charge, should make sense. The size is based on how far away those electrons are. As you move across a period from left to right, the attraction increases, the effective nuclear charge increases. And therefore, as you move across the period, the atoms become smaller and smaller and smaller, more dense, but smaller. And we can see that this repeats itself for the other periods as well. As you go from sodium across to argon, the trend is that the atoms decrease in size. Again, they become more massive, but they take up less space. Um, now note that as we move from potassium to sodium, so we're looking at the group one elements. If you go up the group, so if we're going up the group here, the atoms are becoming smaller. And as you move across the period, that would be say lithium to neon or sodium to argon, that would be across the period, the atoms are becoming smaller as well. So the higher up you go and the further to the right, the smaller the atoms become. So lithium, sodium, and potassium, our alkali metals, end up being the peaks within their particular period. And the noble gases end up being the troughs, the, the smallest ones within their particular period. We can show this trend on the periodic table. Um, and again, you can state any of these trends um, from either side. So you can talk about 
which way do the atoms get bigger or which way do they get smaller. Um, here we are looking at the increase in size. And so again, as you move across a period, um, you're going to get a bigger and, and, and bigger and bigger atom. So sodium ends up being bigger and argon ends up being smaller. And the trend is moving to the left, they get bigger. If you move to the right, obviously the opposite would be true, they'd be getting smaller. And again, that is due to effective nuclear charge. The more protons you have within the same period, the more effective nuclear charge, the more attraction those outer electrons feel. And therefore, argon with lots of protons pulling on that third shell ends up being quite small. Whereas sodium, it also has a third shell, but there's not as many protons as argon has. And therefore, it's going to be much more, um, much larger radius, much greater size, not mass, size. And again, a little bit easier to understand the, the size increasing as we move down a group. So obviously if you move down, you're adding in a shell each time you move down to the next period. Um, as you move down a group, you're moving from period one to period two to period three to period four to period five. And they are gonna become larger because obviously you're, you're adding in one shell, two shell, three shell, four shell, and so on. Second trend that we wanna want to understand is ionization energy. So we know what ions are, atoms gain or lose electrons. Ionization energy specifically is the energy required to remove an electron. So we are trying to make cations here. We're trying to make positive ions here. So the energy required to pull off an electron, that's referred to as ionization energy. The trend for ionization energy ends up looking like this. And so again, we can, we can say, okay, well, here's hydrogen and here's helium way up here. Here's lithium, and then we move our way across, and here is neon. And then here's sodium, and here is argon. So again, we can see a fairly distinctive pattern. Do a nice line of best fit for each of these periods anyways. Um, and the, the general trend within a period, it's not perfect, but it's pretty good, is that they increase, so again, period one, period two, period three, and a little bit of period four here. Um, we can see that within the period, as you move across from lithium to neon, we can see that there's a general increase in the energy it takes to remove an electron. And again, the, the reasoning behind this is the same. It's that effective nuclear charge. As you move across a period, there are more protons pulling on the same shell, and therefore it's gonna be harder to pull those electrons away. They, they're feeling more attractive force. The same cause as the decrease in radius is the increase in ionization energy. The more attraction those electrons feel towards the nucleus, the smaller the atoms will be, and the harder it would be to remove an electron. Again, we end up with our ends of the periods here, the noble gases, they're the hardest within the period to remove electrons from. Because again, you have the most amount of protons pulling on that particular shell. And the lowest values are the ones that have the fewest protons pulling on whichever particular outer valence shell you happen to be talking about, whichever period you're in. So again, we can, we can draw this onto our periodic table. Um, and again, we're, we're talking about increasing. You could just do the opposite, talking about decreasing. But if you're talking about increasing ionization energy, as you move, let's do what we're talking about here, period three here, as you move across any of the, the, the periods here, we are increasing the ionization energy because the outer electrons are feeling more pull from those additional protons that it has a greater effective nuclear charge. And therefore it's harder to pull an electron off argon than it is to pull off sodium. If you move up a group, so you go from a lower period to a higher period, as you move up a group, um, it is also going to increase the ionization energy. Because remember, you don't have that shielding effect. So argon has a fair amount of, it has two inner shells there. Um, and neon has that one inner, inner shell. Helium has no inner shells. It just has that one, one outer shell there. And so since there's less shielding as you move up a group, um, it is going to be harder and harder to pull those electrons off. More and more ionization energy, higher ionization energy, because there is also a higher effective nuclear charge. Last one we're going to talk about today is electron affinity. So this is the 
the affinity, the desire um, of an atom to gain an electron to become a negative ion. This one's not as clear in terms of the trends. Um, it's also expressed um, in terms of energy. And, and when we talk about the, the change in energy, we're going to be using um, negative values means that the energy is being released and positive means energy is required it is going to be need to be put in. So essentially a high negative electron affinity means that they easily take they really want electrons so high electron affinity uh, high, high negative value for electron affinity means that they they want to take an electron quite a bit so if we look at the the numbers on this and again it's not quite as easy to understand um, but what we do know is that the halogens they like electrons right? they're really close to having a full outer shell so they gain one they're, they're nice and happy so they really want an electron and so with a desire for electron a high electron affinity we see large negative numbers um, after that uh, it doesn't follow a trend as nicely we want, we're not even going to graph these ones um, also notice that the noble gases don't want to gain any electrons that part should make sense um, and and there are some other things happening here that we won't get into when we only have the Bohr model um, Bohr Rutherford model to explain it so essentially electron affinity is the atoms um, desire for electrons um, and we know that atoms that do want electrons will have higher electron affinity.